Good morning class, today is Monday, May 25th. Let's begin with science. So, today we're gonna do sound energy notes, but before we get into that, I do wanna review everything just to make sure that we're all on the same page and that we got this you know, clear as day in our heads. So there are two things in the universe, only two things, and neither of those things can be created or destroyed. They can only change form. They are matter and energy. And matter has four different types, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. They change between each other through physical changes, and if something crazy happens, they can also change through chemical changes. Let's review what those are, the physical changes. Liquid to a solid is called freezing. Solid to a liquid melts back again. Liquid to a gas is called evaporation. Gas to a liquid is condensation. Awesome. So then, now that we've gotten rid of the matter, we're gonna focus on the energy. The energy has two main types. It is potential kinetic. Potential is the stored energy. Remember, it's the energy when our legs are bent, when our arm is back ready to throw something. It's when a marker is in the air before it drops. Those are all potential energy. Um, energy can kind of be classified from there as potential or kinetic. Now, there are several different types of energy that fit into that potential or kinetic uh, situation. They are one, two, three. Mechanical is energy of movement. Electrical is the flow of electrons. Chemical is in food and batteries too. Stored in chemical bonds. Sound needs matter with vibrations. Thermal is heat like the sun in the sky. Radiant is light that travels in transverse waves, bouncing to our eyes. Fabulous. Then up to this point, we've been focusing on one specific type of energy, which is electrical energy. So let's sing our electrical energy song. So we went from the universe, matter and energy. Energy is two main types, potential and kinetic. Of those types, we're going to focus on each one individually. So now we're focusing on energy. Uh, I'm sorry, electrical energy. So electrons flow in past. Series has one single path. Parallel has two different ways to keep the light. Series electrons flow in about. One resistor goes, the rest go out. Parallel has two different ways to keep them bright. Circuits can be open and closed. Switches make it stop and go. Resistors use electricity like fans and lights and radios. Conductors allow electricity to flow like water easily. Conductors made of metal like wires. Insulators block electricity. Plastic wood, no energy. Insulators like rubber on tires. Fabulous. Not me. Hopefully you're singing at home and hopefully you're doing fabulous. That's just always what I say after I finish and it's hard to get out of my brain <laughs> from school. It's weird teaching at home people. So now we're going to focus specifically on sound energy and sound energy is a little bit more complicated than electrical energy if you could believe it. So just do the best you can and know that this is just background knowledge that's going to help you in future science classes. Oh, also remember, this is the paper, what it should look like on the left. You should be filling in the blanks with all of those capital letter words in the notes. For our sound notes, sound is sound energy moves in waves vibrating through substances. So we can't have sound without matter. We need that matter to vibrate. And so we hear, we see this guy in the bottom and he's talking into a weirdly shaped cave. And we see that sound energy bouncing back. We have lots of great places to do this in Colorado, but if you've ever been in a cave or on top of a mountain or really open space and you just, um, or not open space, a really closed space, and you went, hello, you might have heard it go, hello, 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 back. And that is the sound echoing from your voice, hitting a piece of matter and coming back to your ear. Pretty cool, huh? So vibrations, like we talked about, sound needs matter with vibrations. This is sound waves bouncing off matter. So for example, um, one second. So I came back with my awesome guitar and I want to show you when I pluck one of the strings, 
And again, plug for music. You should sign up for music classes in high school and in, in middle school. So watch when I pluck a string, you see that moving back and forth, right? It's easiest on the thickest string. You see it moving back and forth really fast. That's vibrations. Inside of here, this whole side of my guitar is all hollow. And that's so that when I pluck the string, it vibrates and then it echoes throughout this chamber inside that's completely hollow, making it sound a little bit louder. I'm gonna come back to my guitar in a second. So vibrations are sound waves bouncing off of matter. Sound cannot travel with matter. Sound waves are also called compression waves or longitudinal waves. So that was a lot to process. Let me just show again. When I pluck this, this is the matter. If I don't, if I just pluck the air, right, I can't create any sound. I need a piece of matter. Remember, remember matter is a fancy name for stuff to help me create that sound, music, or noise. It's moving back and forth really fast. That's a vibration. It's echoing in here. The wave that comes off of my guitar is going to be a longitudinal and transverse wave. I'm sorry, longitudinal or compression wave. What a compression wave looks like is basically like a slinky. Um, and if we were in school, I'd have us get out slinkies and do all this, so it's kind of a bummer. But it kind of looks like this that I drew on my whiteboard. So it looks like a slinky and it kind of goes out and bounces off and comes back to our ears. So compression wave and longitudinal waves are two words for the same thing. A compression is when that longitudinal wave is pushed together, and a rarefaction is when that compression wave is spread apart. So on mine, let me show you, where I have my arrow, that's a compression, where my slinky looking thing is close together, my rarefaction is where it's further apart. So let's do this, we go like this. Compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction. Now we got it, right? So kind of continuing on, this is what the second page should look like. Sound travels the fastest through solids and the slowest through gases. Um, this is best seen if you ever clap your hands um, like this. Okay, now very carefully, only do this once because it kind of hurts. Put your ear down on your desk or table and smack the table. And I bet you're gonna hear it much louder, even if you use the same force through the solid than you would have through the air. And that's because our solid molecules are really close together, and so there's less space for them to travel. They just transfer their energy, boop, 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 boop. If it's further apart, my markers, my sound particles, have further to travel to transfer that sound energy. So solids are close together, they're transferring that energy really quickly, Gases, they're further apart, and so that's why there's less of that contact, less of that. Um, it's slowest through the gas. Okay, so how fat, high, blah, 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 how high or low a note is with sound energy, faster frequencies mean higher pitches. So if my sound wave is traveling really slow, that's how I get a low note. If my sound is traveling really fast, that's how I get a high note, right? And I'm gonna show you this with my guitar for a second. So how I create a bigger sound wave is I need to use on my guitar a thicker string. If I was playing my baritone, I would want to have um, my lips further apart so that I could create more space. So having a lower note is all about creating space, having a thicker um, string on a guitar or violin or viola, um, and on like a piano, the strings that are inside of the piano are shorter or longer, depending on what kind of note. So if you'll notice, my thickest and biggest string plays a pretty low note. My highest string is thin, so it's going to play a pretty high note. Low note, thick string, high note. They both still need matter, they both still vibrate, they both still echo, they both travel in, travel in compression or longitudinal waves. The difference is the thickness of the string, the thicker the matter, the longer it's going to take to hit back and forth, and so therefore the lower the note is. It's moving slower. With a thinner piece of matter, like my high string, it's going to be much higher because it's moving back faster and faster because it's not quite as thick. Now, something else I want to show you, and this is going to be a little bit hard. I don't know, maybe this will be easier. 
with the video. We'll see. I'm just going to play a regular chord. Hopefully this is not so badly out of tune. Whoops. So you hear that chord? Now I'm going to put this handy dandy squisher thing on my guitar. Notice what happens when I put it down. So what this is doing is it's now making my string shorter by collapsing it down and cramping it. So now instead of being this long, my strings are this long. So when I play the same chord, it appears a little bit higher. Let's keep moving it up. So you notice the difference between way up here and way down here. That one's much lower than the ones that are further up here. And that's because my strings, as I move this up and down, get shorter. And when I make my strings shorter, that note is going to be even higher than when I have it down here. My guitar is a little out of, so lower, higher. So basically what am I telling you? There's two things that affect how fast a sound wave can move. It's like the thickness of the matter, the length of the string, but all that that's doing is it's creating a lower or higher note based on how fast that sound wave is going. So if I have a really high frequency or a really fast sound, it's going to be a high pitch note. If I have a low frequency or a low pitch note or a slow note, then it's going to be a lower pitch. So how we do this in my class, this is like a quickish kind of song, is I say, give me a high frequency sound. And my whole class would go, this is a high frequency sound. And then I'd say, give me a low frequency sound. And my whole class would go, this is a low frequency sound. High pitch, high frequency, low pitch, low frequency, compression wave sound energy. So that's just to get you a little pumped up. Compression waves is the name of the game. How fast it's moving affects the pitch or how high or low it is. And we create those pitches by how fast we're moving that matter. Okay, another thing that's good to know is that sonar is a way that scientists use this technology, they use this information to locate things based on how waves bounce off of that matter. Decibels, so just like, remember, um, actually let's pause for a second. Let's review our units that we talked about before. Mass is the amount of stuff in an object. Weight measures gravity. Volumes, the amount of space the stuff takes up. Measuring is easy. And for fun, I just realized I have a guitar here. What am I doing singing by myself? We have mass is the amount of stuff in an object. Weight measures gravity. Volume's the amount of space the stuff takes up. Measuring is easy. Masses in grams measured on a balance, weights and newtons on a scale with springs, volumes and liters, often with the beaker for liquids especially. You're welcome. More humiliation for myself that I'm sure my future children will find somewhere on YouTube in the not too distant future. All right, so how would I say, uh, so we've talked about how the pitch works, right? We say frequency or how fast it's moving determines the pitch. How low if it's moving slow or high if it's moving fast. Um, the other thing that we have difference is the volume, right? So if I play really softly, it's a very quiet sound. sound. If I pluck really hard, it's a really loud sound. So how do we create that? We create that by um, decibels. Decibels are the unit that we use, just like grams is to measure mass, newtons is to measure weight, volumes to measure liters. Decibels is how we measure how loud a sound is. How do we know how loud it's going to be is the amplitude of that sound. Amplitude means how big that sound wave is. So if I have a little itty bitty sound wave, it's going to be very quiet. If I have a huge sound wave, it's going to be very loud. Okay, so that ends our note section. I'm gonna record another video with our Screaming Cups Lab in just a second. So thank you for tuning in and look for the next video.